In the previous lecture, we saw that the capacity of a binary symmetric channel cannot exceed 1 minus h delta. Okay, and we did this by constructing, uh, by showing that each decoding set for at least half of the code words uh, must have size greater than roughly 2 to the power n h delta. And since there are at, low, at most 2 to the power n sequences, that means that the number of such different decoding sets, because they are all disjoint, cannot exceed uh, 2 to the power n into 1 minus h delta. Now, what we will do in this lecture is we will uh, show that this bound can be attained. And the, the first attempt towards it is roughly to uh, invert this argument for the converse. Basically, we try to fit in, try to, in, to fit in disjoint spheres in binary sequences of length n. Sometimes this is called the uh, Boolean hypercube. And, and the specific uh, bound that we have is sometimes called the Gilbert Varshamov bound. Okay, GV bound. Okay. So what do we do? Uh, the idea is as follows. We just first note that for any x, any binary sequence x, uh, for rho equal to uh, n delta plus uh, let's say square root n delta into 1 minus delta by epsilon probability under under this noise zn that you see So probability that Wn uh, of, take the Hamming ball of radius rho around x, probability that this appears around x, this is exactly equal to the probability. So, so just to draw it, you have an x and the question you are asking is, what is the probability that you see a sequence y which is within this radius rho around x. So rho bits are flipped when you send it, that probability is exactly equal to this plus x this is the number of sequences that flip here and this is it so when i when i add a set to a sequence it means that you take all the sequences in the set and add it to the sequence so this is a different sequences different sequences and this is exactly equal to b rho zero all zero sequence okay and so what's the probability of this well by chebyshev inequality you are asking what is the probability that n delta plus square root n, this is the variance of uh, this Bernoulli random variable, n into delta 1 minus delta epsilon and this is, this probability must exceed 1 minus epsilon by Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, so, so this, this is true. So if, if, if you, um, have this delta thing, this will have a large probability. In fact, this need not be, so, so this is true for this, but it's also true for any row greater than this. Okay. Okay. So now what we do is that in our scheme, what we will do is we'll find, we want to find sequences x1 to xm such that the 
hamming balls b rho x1 to x and these are the hamming balls around these sets are disjoint then we can set the decoding set for message m to be this particular thing so when when you see so this is something interesting what is this decoding rule so this corresponds to uh, so these are disjoint sets so if you this corresponds to the following decoding rule d of y equals to uh, the, the minimum distance rule so declare that declare that uh, declare that uh, so these are your code words so declare the code word such that the hamming distance between the code word and the receive sequence is minimized okay. that's the decoding rule the nearest distance uh, the nearest neighbor decoding rule the nearest code word sorry the nearest code word decoding rule the nearest code word decoding rule okay that's the decoding rule we can use so this is what the corresponding decoding sets will be given this so you can do this and we we already saw we already saw that for rho greater than n delta plus square root n into 1 minus delta by epsilon the wn of this guy of xm must exceed 1 minus epsilon thus it does suffices to find largest such sequence largest such largest number largest such largest number m of such sequences okay so what is the largest number of such sequences that you can find here such that these these decode these humming balls are all disjoint just to draw a picture here so you have the set of all binary sequences y n and you are finding one x one here and then when you find x in you take this ball this is taken then the next x two is found somewhere else and then again you take out the hamming ball of radius rho and you don't want these balls to to uh, to intersect each other because you want these to be disjoint okay so how do you do this so the goal is to construct the largest set c such that uh, if you have this x1 to xm such that such that so, so the goal is to construct construct the largest set c largest in cardinality such that for any two points in c the hamming distance between them is at least such that for any two points here the 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 balls of radius rho around those points do not intersect okay. so one way of doing it is that once you select a point x so you don't want obviously any point in this ball cannot be included in uh, as a code word once you select a point x because 
this point will be closer than rho. But furthermore, in fact, any point within this cannot be included because if you have a point x prime here that is included, then the then the Hamming ball of radius rho of these two points will intersect. Okay, so it suffices to select the largest set C such that for all pairs of points x and x prime in C the Hamming distance between x and x prime is greater than 2 rho. Okay. So once you choose a point x you must throw away all the points which are at Hamming distance 2 rho from it. Okay, So that's a procedure. So how do we select the set? We select this set using a greedy procedure. They are called, the called greedy procedures. Once x is included in c we forbid all points in the hamming ball of radius 2 rho around x from being including in, included in c so at every step you, you add a point and then you remove all the points from the Hamming ball of radius 2 rho around it as potential candidates and then you remove this set and then you take the next point and remove another set of such points. So if you keep on doing this, how many code words will be found? Okay. So note that at every step in this procedure, we remove At most n h two row by n points. Now that's the that's the number of points in Hamming ball of radius oh, points. Okay. And we can continue till there's any one sequence left. Okay. Therefore, so every step you remove at most these many points, and there are total two to the power n sequences. So how many code words will you find? You must find at least 2 to the power n divided by this cardinal 2 to the power n h 2 rho by n. Okay, and and remember that rho that we were choosing was coming from this condition, the so 2n delta. So this is exactly equal to 2 to the power n into 1 minus h of 2 delta plus some constant time by 1 by root n. So as you take limit and go into infinity, this goes to 0. So implies we have found a code of rate exceeding 1 minus h 2 delta. Okay, but Okay, so that's that's easy enough construction. It's every time you take a point, you throw all the points at radius 2 delta from it. And so then you take the next point from the remaining guys. And now again, throw all the points of radius 2 delta from this new point and then take the next point. If you if you move, move in this way, then you will ensure that no two points in your code words have their humming ball of radius rho intersecting. Uh, two rho, not two delta, two rho. And so, but it turns out that you only get one minus h2 delta code words, not 1 minus h delta, what we were looking for. So this is not optimal. Okay. Lower than our converse bound of 1 minus h delta. So what went wrong? Well, one thing that went wrong was that we were very conservative. 
once we chose a point we were throwing every point within the radius uh, to row outside it there was no reason for these sets to be spheres in fact we can uh, we, we may still if we proceed more carefully we can do better than this the question is how do we do this how do we come up with this x1 to x m such that they are hemming balls of radius uh, such, such that we can we can uh, such uh, so, such that their hemming ball of radius uh, two row. Actually, we don't even need to bring in this hemming balls. All we need to ensure is that we can find some decoding set, okay? Such that uh, that decoding set has large probability given this x. That was the code construction part that required that we required. So how do we do this? There are very di many different ways of doing this, but what I will present is sort of a surprising method um, and this is our second attempt and this is a randomized code construction so a random code construction so instead of giving you a single seek a single code uh, code book x1 to xm I will generate these code words randomly from some distribution and I will show that the average probability over the random choice of the code book is smaller than epsilon the average the average over the average over code book generation average probability and since the average probability is smaller than probability of error is smaller than epsilon there must be at least one code book for which the average probability of error is less than epsilon that's the idea of random code construction and, and these randomly constructed code books are called code uh, ensembles and this is a very profound idea this randomized constructions are very popular now in uh, many many topics including algorithms it is an entire uh, successful top very successful uh, list of algorithms which are essentially randomized uh, but this the random code construction that we're going to see now uh, come has its origin in Shannon's original paper and this was a very early use of randomized construction. Just slightly, maybe five, six years before this construction, uh, there were other randomized constructions for combinatorial problems given by uh, Ardish and Rennie in the context of graph constructions. And uh, sim similar, this is around the same time. So this is a very early use of randomized construction. And in that sense, this is quite, uh, quite interesting. It's quite an advance. So let's let's make it more systematic. So we will generate a random code book. Consider, by the way, I am not pretending that this is a this is an algorithmic procedure. This is a theory proof which shows that this code rate can be attained. So we are not trying to be efficient in terms of encoding or decoding currently. And in this course, I will not show you efficient constructions. I will just show you that there exists a code which attains this rate. And now what that code is, actually it took many, many years to find provably capacity achieving codes. And now we have those constructions. Some of them have made it uh, already to the standard, uh, to the two standards. Uh, of course, st standards uh, for communication standards work on channel models, which are much more complicated than this binary symmetric channels. Uh, but anyway, theory builds on the simple models and then we adopt those codes for more practical channel models. Okay, but in this course, we will not look at this practical constructions like LDPC codes, turbo codes or polar codes. But we will show you a proof, we will present a proof which says that such code, such codes exist. Okay, so consider a random code book C equals to X1 to Xn. So all these x1 to xm are uh, n length random vectors where xm equals to xm1 to xmn is generated iid Bernoulli half okay so randomly generated code words each bit is just random so this is a random sequence of bits and all these code words x m 
are IID for different M. independent and identically distributed for different M. So one way to think of it is that you have generated this M times N matrix of uh, bits, random bits, each bit is just a random coin flip and each row M times N. So the, there are N columns. So each row corresponds to a code word. So given this code book, we can now define a code word for this code book, define a code e comma d given by for the encoder mapping e of m equals to xm and the decoder mapping d of y equals to so d of y is m if if there is a unique y if you can find a unique y if sorry the unique x if there is uh if sorry if m is if xm is the unique code word satisfying the having distance between y and x m is less than or equal to rho. If this is the unique code word, then we declare this. If there are multiple or if there is none, then we say there is an error. Okay, we allow our decoder to declare an error also. If you don't like this, you can just declare one. Anyway, we'll account it for error. All right, so this is our code construction. So this is how the encoder decoder works. This encoder, this is a randomized construction because it depends on this randomly chosen sequence. Okay, now, so what is the probability of error? The expected probability of error actually this is the expected average probability of error is given by so we have this uh, uh, for an e comma d we have a probability of error right and and this this depends on what x1 to xmr and so we take ex expectation over this so this expectation the outer expectation is over the random choice random uh, code Okay. So if we show that this guy here is less than equal to epsilon implies if we show this if we show that this expected average PE is less than equal to epsilon then there exists a choice x1 to xm for which e is less than epsilon. Okay, so, so this thing you can think of it as some probability of error corresponding to x1 to xm. And if this average is less than epsilon, then there must be one which is less than epsilon. And that shows that there exists a code book which has probability of error less than epsilon. So that's our plan. So we would like to show that for for m that is not that for m that is roughly to the power n into one minus h delta, this probability of error is less than epsilon, and then we'll be done. Okay, that's the plan. So we will now analyze this probability of error.
let's so let's proceed so pe of x1 to xm for a given x1 to xm is equal to 1 by m summation m equal to 1 to m probability that the decoder did not declare m but m is sent m was sent okay so denote by am let am I'm calling it AM for a reason that will become clear soon, but let AM, what we were calling DM earlier, AM be the set of those Y such that the Hamming distance between XM and Y is less than equal to rho. Then uh, this probability of error, this probability that D of YN not equal to M given m sent and this is all for a given x1 to xm is less than equal to probability that you receive something in am complement but you are sending xm plus so, so either you receive something outside it or so this is a very important split maybe i'll elaborate it a little bit more so this probability can be bounded by two events probability that yn actually did not belong to m or probability that yn belongs to someone some other xms Um, having ball of radius rho okay. and this will result in having possibly having two different m declared because here if we say if it's a unique code word what if there are two well if there are two you will declare a part so that will result in an error too uh, so these are two different kind of probabilities of error so, so the, this event implies that yn either belongs to this event or this event. So we use a union bound to get this. So this guy here is exactly equal to wn of am complement given xn plus summation m prime not equal to m. Okay, this, this can happen if m prime is not equal to m. This is also an upper bound because this I'm bounding again by union bound probability that you received something in the in the am for some other m prime but you were sending xm okay these are the two probability of error events right let's try to analyze both these quantities separately okay and and the the point is we will not we, it's difficult to analyze each of them for a given xm but if we take expectation over xm we can analyze them so expected probability of error given some x1 to xm this expectation is over x1 to xm the random code word is less than equal to the expected probability expected average error probability here I'm using linearity of expectation plus 1 by m summation m equal to 1 to m m prime not equal to m expected probability of seeing a m prime given x okay, these are the two events 
So these are the two probabilities. So the, if you look at this first one here, so this is also equal to 1 by m for the first term this is the first term here expected value of wn of AM complement given XM so when will this happen this will happen if you have XM as input and you each XM was passed through this IID channel WN denote the corresponding output by uh, YN okay so let X comma Y equals to xt comma yt t equal to 1 to m be iid with xt being bernoulli half and p y t given xt being the same as our channel distribution w so this probability here is exactly the probability that the hamming distance between x and y exceeds rho. So there is no dependence on m in this probability. Okay, so what is this probability? Now having distance between two random vectors is an additive quantity. Okay, so one thing to note here is does not depend on m because we already took expectation and our generation procedure was symmetric. After taking expectation this whole thing doesn't depend on m. Now what is this probability? This is written, this can be written in a nice form. It's the probability that summation t equal to 1 to n xt not equal to yt greater than rho. Okay, that's what this first term is. And so we'll be able to control it and make it very small if we choose rho appropriately. Okay. So we'll come back to that. What about the second term? For the second term, let's look at this guy. Expected value of Wn of A m prime. So for m prime not equal to m. A m prime x m. This probability, this expectation is over choice of the code book. So this probability depends on two code words, xm and xm prime. And they are both chosen independently with the same distribution. Okay, so these are the two different code words that we are choosing independently. So average over these guys, this probability. So what is the probability? Here it is summation over, you see a y such that the Hamming distance between y and x m prime, this x m prime that you generated here is less than rho. But you want to account for this probability of such a y under x m. That's what this shows. So this is a sort of a complicated expression that you were sending x m but you see a y which is closer to x m prime where x m prime and x m are both random and generated independently. Okay. So now what we can do here is we can write it as take this summation over y out uh, take this summation over xm inside and take it here because we can do that this because this guy doesn't depend on xm so xm prime probability that xm prime probability that this x uh, this, this m prime has this code word associated with it associated with it summation over y's which are close to this code word And then you do summation over x m, p x n, x 
m w n of y given x so if you notice this guy here this probability actually is the is a very simple thing it's the probability under y n remember that if we choose uh, what was y n y n was given here um, it is the output when the input is bernoulli half and when the input is bernoulli half you can verify that the output is also bernoulli half irrespective of delta so this output is this one it's the probability under y n of y doesn't depend on x m because you have averaged over x m therefore this pro so the, the, the important thing here is that when you average it out it only depends on the marginal distribution now so what you get is summation over i'll just call this x m prime as just x and y okay such that the hamming distance between x and y y and x x and y is less than rho maybe less than equal to less than equal to rho and then you have x and p y and y okay so what is this quantity this is a very interesting quantity it's looking at the independent distribution on x and y with the same marginals okay I'll, this is the independent distribution and under this independent distribution what is the probability that x and y are within a distance row okay that's the second quantities bound here and the first quantity bound was this one this was under the original distribution x y so i'll i'll write it as under x and y all right so when you combine these two bounds they are they're all the same independent of m so you get this number but this one gets multiplied with an extra m minus one so we have the average probability of error, the expected probability of error for a random code book is bounded by under the original distribution p x and y n this x n was something you selected you use uniform we use uniform distribution and this y n is uh, the output of the channel what is the probability that these two sequences are away are further away than rho plus m minus 1 times what is the probability that two independent sequences with the same marginals are close okay, that's the these are the two bounds for the two probabilities of error this is a very interesting thing okay that's what we get here uh note that note that these two probabilities here this 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 the role of hamming distance here is not so important you could have chosen any rule so if you call this set am so this is basically a complement and this is basically a so what it looks very much like is that there is an independent distribution and there is a decision rule for that and there is a joint distribution and there is a decision uh, rule for that so you can think of this as a hypothesis testing problem for independent distribution versus joint distribution and analyze this guy okay. so so what do we do from here on well now we choose our row so set rho to be n delta plus square root n delta into 1 minus delta by epsilon okay so if we do that then probability that x n y n maybe 2 del 2 epsilon 9 so under x and i n what is the probability that x n y n is greater than 2 note that under this joint distribution x and y n the difference between x and y n is sum of 
independent Bernoulli delta random variables because for each xn this guy just gets flipped with probability delta so this is exactly Hamming distance x and y maybe if I write it in two steps so you, you this will look like summation t equal to 1 to n indicator function xt not equal to yt and each of these guys is independent and is Bernoulli delta zt which is Bernoulli delta so this is essentially the sum of Bernoulli delta guys and we, we are asking what is the probability that this sum exceeds n delta plus square root 2n delta into 1 minus delta by epsilon and by Chebyshev's inequality this is Chebyshev's inequality this is less than epsilon by 2 so this is for the first term here okay now coming to the second term here this one here So this one now asks us what is the probability that so note that under the independent distribution Pxn Pym indicate a function xt not equal to yt. So what is the probability that two random bit xt yt differ? This is now just Bernoulli half, not Bernoulli delta. Okay. and iid for dif in different t's so this is also independent and identical for different t's therefore pxn pyn of two independent guys being closer than rho this is equal to probability that you have this Bernoulli half z t tilde and you want the sum to be less than or equal to rho okay so these guys are now Bernoulli half what is that probability well this probability again by Chebyshev inequality is less than by the way this rho for us is n delta plus um, 2n delta 1 minus delta by epsilon square correct so so this this guy here since yeah, so so what is the probability of this guy so we can evaluate this probability in many ways remember that this is a uniform distribution so each of them there are these many this is the distribution here uniform distribution how many sequences are there of radius up to rho but well, that's n choose i okay this is exactly this and this is less than equal to rho n choose rho 2 to the power minus n and this is assuming if rho is less than n by 2 which we can assume here. because rho is n delta plus this this we can assume for n sufficiently large so this guy here is less than equal to um, rho is less than n by 2 so this rho is less than n and this we know is less than 2 to the power h uh, rho by n that's something minus 1 So this probability of error is less than or equal to n times 2 to the power minus n into 1 minus h of delta minus some c by root n. Alright, so this is the second bound. It's very small, exponentially small. This is epsilon by 2. So when you combine these two bounds here, what do we get? The expected probability of error for the random code book is less than equal to epsilon by 2 plus n times 
m minus 1 times 2 to the power minus n into 1 minus h delta minus c by root n a very small back off from delta which is smaller than epsilon if m if this guy is less than epsilon by 2 okay if n m minus 1 2 to the power minus n to 1 minus h delta minus c by root n is less than epsilon by 2 okay therefore as long as m so this can only happen if m is smaller than this so as long as m is less than 1 minus h delta minus uh, you know, let's say 1 by log m as long as 1 by n log m is less, less than 1 minus h delta minus c by root n yeah, this n is also here so let's say uh, minus log n by n we can find an m n code with probability of error less than epsilon because because the average is small so one of them must be small so we can find we can find find as in there exist we may not be able to algorithmically find okay and this implies this rate is achievable 1 minus h delta is an achievable rate therefore c b s c w uh, delta must exceed 1 minus h delta okay so we achieve this 1 minus h delta rate so there exists a code which achieves this rate that's the idea of the proof okay so this is a bit of a difficult proof but the recipe that we presented here is quite generic later we'll extend in the next lecture we'll extend it to beyond binary symmetric channels so the most important observation is that we could we had two kind of errors for the randomized construction one comes here that you the, the code word that was sent you didn't declare that one second is here that there is some other code word which also competes with this code word uh, as, a, as a as a decoding my guy and the main observation is that because we were generating code words independent this event has very small probability exponentially small and this was what determines how large m can be because we have a union bound here so so that gives that well it's, it's so small so it can handle an m which is exponential in n and that exponent is exactly what what the largest rate we can is exactly the largest rate we can get which turns out to be 1 minus h delta all right so to conclude together with the upper and the lower bound we have shown that bs this this guy is 1 minus h delta that's all i wanted to prove in this class uh, in the next lecture we will go to general channels okay see you in the next lecture